Hey everyone, I'm here with another very special guest today. This is Issa. Hi. How do you, how would you introduce yourself, Issa? I would introduce myself while I work with Charlie. That's mm-hmm. the most important thing about me. It's in all of my bios. I work with yeah. Charlie. <laughs> At ConvertKit, I'm the webinar producer, and I'm also a writer working on my second book. Issa's second book is about dreams, right? And so I thought today we could have a talk about dreams, because as you will know, if you've watched my channel before, or, you know, follow me online, I'm definitely a dreamer. Like, I'm always aiming for things and, you know, never quite comfortable just sitting there in the status quo. Yeah. So who better to talk about that with than Issa? What is your philosophy on dreams, Issa? What made you want to write a book about it? That is such a good question. So I wrote a book about it or decided to write a book about it actually when I was hit this moment where I didn't even know if I believed in dreams anymore or believed in what was possible. And it started because I was applying or had applied to a Harvard doctoral program. And I didn't really think anything was going to happen. I was very young for the program. I got an interview. I was flown to Cambridge. And I just had this moment being there where I just felt like the American dream is happening. Like none of my grandparents had an education past the fourth grade. And I, you know, never imagined myself anywhere like Harvard. Uh, My grandparents are from Puerto Rico. And it just felt like the thing, the things were happening. And like being a dreamer, it was, it was really working. And then I did this interview and I didn't get in. And it's funny because that detail, it's kind of like, so what? You could have applied again. You know, it's not the worst <laughs> worst thing in the world. Yeah. There are much worse things than not getting into a Harvard doctoral program. But what was really strange for me is it hit me in this place where I felt so stupid. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, why am I am I trying too hard? Right. Am I dreaming too big? Yeah. And is that a recipe just for heartbreak and embarrassment and mm-hmm. shame and like maybe this is as far as I go maybe this is a good as good as it gets maybe I am trying too hard in a society that is very broken there was also a lot of other things going on in the world at yeah. that time um, and I was just starting to feel like I was fighting a broken system and why right. even try yeah that's that's like one of the worst feelings in the world I think is questioning your dreams and like feeling stupid for wanting something so badly yes, you know yes and I mentioned American dream that's so funny because I know yeah. there's like a, a, a whole world out a there. whole world <laughs> out there and I think that comes from being so indoctrinated when you grow up in America you're just really fed this intense idea that yeah. you can do anything you want to do dream big and then you get older and you realize not only has America got its issues but everywhere yeah. has its issues and it's just not as simple as that and I started by reading a book because that's usually where I go. Yeah, that's a writer, I, right? That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> and I had heard about this book, The Alchemist, many times, and it just kept popping up in my life. And if a book pops up in my life randomly more than two times, I usually am like, "Well, got to move that up it. the list. Yeah. Go read that." And it was this fictional book about a boy going for a dream he actually had when he was sleeping and dreamed of this treasure and like went off to actually find this treasure. And it's a book that's just been sold I think 65 million times and it's has all these messages about dreams in them and very much up for interpretation it's not a how-to book by any means but it just made me think why does this resonate with people why do we dream like why do we go for these things and make these things a reality I'm at the point now years later where even I'll just look in the sky and be like we built the steel thing that flies in the air or like watching the right. winter olympics at least right now it yeah, might be and over the triple axel and, yeah. yeah or like people on this sled going down this t- long tube i'm like someone thought of this yeah. and now it's a thing yeah and that's the process that kept this going for me all throughout the ups and downs of like should i write even a book about dreams or is this is this a bad idea or you know it, can this be damaging if you try too hard or dream too big is, right. can that be paralyzing right there are so many aspects to it and I just realized, well, I'm going to start by interviewing real people who mm-hmm. they said, yeah, I invented this thing where I slide down the ice. I didn't interview that person, but that would have been cool. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> great time. Yeah. <laughs> but I started looking for people who said, yeah, like I had a dream come true and working backwards from there. That's so cool. Do you think you're an optimist? Yeah. I, it's funny that I yeah. hesitate. I probably, years ago, I probably would have said yes. Mm-hmm. And throughout this book, I actually realized how pessimistic I can be as well and how 
those two things kept fighting against each other. I'm very pragmatic and can be very much a realist. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I had, like, I'm going to go to Harvard. I didn't get to Harvard. Oh, my gosh, everything's awful. You can see I'm kind of extreme in both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I have a hard time defining that. But I think I go back and forth. um, And I think that's why this book has been so important to me because I want... I, the, the pessimistic part of me doesn't help me go anywhere. I think that I'm an optimist with a severe case of self-doubt. And so, Ooh, like, I I'm really that. optimistic about everything. I'm always trying to, like, push myself to dream bigger. But I think that I have trouble dreaming big because I have a lot of self-doubt and, like, mm-hmm. imposter syndrome. And I'm like, this is where I think I can get. Whereas, actually, I should be dreaming much bigger and challenging myself much more. Yes. But because of that doubt, I, like purposefully will like lessen my dreams in a way yes I think I really relate with that I think my pessimism is definitely two-thirds self-doubt and then one-third like the world is terrible (laughs) and awful and I think actually some of that feeds into self-doubt there's just so much inequity and so many messages you hear if you're a woman or a woman of color and then that almost feeds into your self-doubt and it becomes this crazy cycle and I think that's what inspired me to keep going. Yeah. Is knowing that people like yourself who have so much to offer, who knows what the Charlie airplane in the sky yeah. thing I is. I don't know yet. <laughs> but there's something there, and I just kept realizing that the things I was struggling with really had a true danger to hold me back. Yeah. And these were things that shouldn't hold me back. And the more I learned into learned these stories mm-hmm. and learned about people who actually were making it happen, people who had way more setbacks than some that I could even imagine, yeah. it kind of gave me a little courage and just a little sense of like, oh, it's okay to feel self-doubt maybe the whole time. Yeah. Like, that's okay, but here's how to work with it. Yeah. And keep going. So something that I always want to encourage people to do who watch my YouTube channel, you know, um, is to dream big and like push themselves further and yeah, just know that they can aim higher, I suppose. And you've been writing a book about people's processes in achieving their dreams. Is there anything you can share from it? Like, I don't know, some advice, first of all, for figuring out your dream, I suppose. Has that been covered in your book? Yes, that's definitely something I, that I have thought about as I interviewed people. A lot of the people I interviewed, they, you know, were very sure of their dream at some point. So right. we kind of start there. So yep. we didn't go too deep into how do you find it. But one thing I've noticed is that uh, when it comes to going for a dream, it's something you kind of you kind of know at some point. Yeah, and like you trust that it's going to come to you at some point. Yes, I don't think it's something where it's like, oh, you have to have a dream. You don't have a dream right now? What are you doing with your life? Right. I do not think that Okay, I love that. Yes, Yes. like you can, I think you could live a perfectly happy life never having a specific dream that Mm -hmm. you're going for. I think the kind of dreamers that I talk to and the kind of dreamer that I I am, it's when there's something burning inside of you Mm -hmm. that you just, you have to go for this thing. Yeah. And you don't even always know why or sometimes you're like, why can't I? not go for this thing this is causing me so much stress and pain but you're you just can't seem to let it go yeah but I think you know you can always find a dream if you want one a direction by looking at what did you really love when you were a kid Mm -hmm. I, I will say some of the best stories I've I've really heard are come from dreams that people stemmed from when they were a kid and what they naturally did when they were playing yeah That makes sense, because if that's been in you all along, you know, it might come out in a different way. I think that perhaps I am definitely going towards some of, like, my smaller dreams at the moment, but I don't think I quite know what my bigger dream is yet. And I like, like, the way you talk about it, I don't feel bad about that, you know? I shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because sometimes it does feel like, you know, you see people achieving all these great things, and I'm like, I feel like I'm not working towards something that's at that level yet, because I don't know what I want it to be. And that, and that is totally okay because mm. a lot of what goes into actually achieving a big dream is actually um, stepping back and then doing all of these little things and just yeah. focusing on getting really good. So what about if you do have a dream and something that you're wanting to aim for, how do you like make it happen? Like, yeah. that's, I know you can't answer that's that really. Question. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you some of the things that stick out to me yes. that like are that actionable, that yeah, helped yeah. me a lot. I think one of them, one of the biggest ones was education mm-hmm. is self-education figuring out okay when it comes to what you really want to achieve what do you need to get 
really, really good at. Yeah. And then that's where that backup process, where at some point you almost forget about your dream because then it totally freaks you out because it, it feels so big. focusing on this education Yes, phase. the yeah. dream can help be the f- initial fuel, and then there's times where I'll pull on it because I need that fuel. I'm like, remember, this could happen. So yeah. focus down here. But it was really about figuring out what is the education? Where do you get the best education in mm-hmm. your craft or in the thing that you need? How do you develop it for yourself if you have no money? How do you start getting yeah. really creative? Um, that is really key. And also understanding the timeline. That the kind of education, depending on the, the bigness of the dream, and you kind of know that gutturally when your yeah. dream is like really big or maybe it's a little smaller, the bigger the dream, the longer it's going to take. Yep. And and ha- really learning to have patience with yourself and looking at your progress um, in learning. Because your progress in terms of feeling like you're getting anywhere professionally, if your dream has any kind of professional connotation, you can go years with feeling like, I'm getting nowhere. This yeah. is stupid. And yet... That is required. <laughs> like, yeah. If you're in that, I'm getting nowhere, this is stupid, and you've been it for years, depending on your type of dream, that can sometimes be a really good thing because most people are going to drop off and you're going to get yep. way ahead of them. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think that something that I always say when I'm you know, talking to people about the process is that you have to enjoy the journey and not just the end product. Yes. So if something, I think for something to truly be your dream, you're going to find joy in the hard parts along the way yes. you know it'll give you that edge to actually have a chance yeah. at making it happen yeah. because I've been noticing that in the Olympics too when huh. they've been asking the gold medalists like about their process or about what they're thinking and there a lot of them so far are just like I love it yeah. Like, I love it. And it's not just like, oh, I love this. It's no big deal. You can tell that they love it so much. They're going to be out there on the ice mm. a little bit longer because yeah. it's more than just, I got to do this to get this. Yeah. And that that doesn't work very well and cause a lot of stress. It's the true passion, right? That's where yes. passion comes from. Matched into play. with that intensity of yeah. work ethic and education, right? It's, that's yeah. where it's kind of like this magical yeah. secret sauce. I love that. Any more, like things you that have stood out to you as you've been interviewing people for your book that, yes. that have helped people yeah many i'm sure yes. what's um, your next favorite my one? next favorite one <laughs> is mentors okay i don't know if i've interviewed anyone who couldn't point to at least one person mm-hmm. who represented in some way what they wanted to accomplish or who yeah. they wanted to be not directly because every person's dream is so unique yeah. to who they are but they all had that person um, a lot of them found a way to meet that person oh. or to you know directly be mentored by that person whether it was the education piece learning of that particular part of the craft is finding those people who represent kind of where you want to be in your dream and getting closer to them whether it's going to a conference where they're at depending on who they are if they're really famous and maybe you're thinking you might not ever meet them the cool part is if they're really famous there's things written about them right other people have done the research and you can learn and get inspired and what I found it's it's less about like having their poster on your wall but thinking about like how do they think what Mm. books did they read where did they get trained and kind of using that kind of stuff yeah because it's about their journey as well right like with design especially which is obviously what I can relate to best you're not going to learn as much from looking at someone's final product as you are looking at their process and like how they reached it because looking at the final product you're just seeing you know what it ended up looking like you're not seeing the struggles they went through to get there and the thought process and yes how to replicate it and depending on your industry it it doesn't even have to always be someone who's doing exactly what you want to do like one of my biggest artist mentors is Lynn Manuel Miranda and my dream has nothing to do with writing musicals (laughs) but I am a writer and so he very much inspires me because of the barriers that he broke I think Mm -hmm. and of course the the quality of his art and I think my big dreams really focus on this idea of quality is really important to me and as I dug deeper into his story the thing that stayed with me is that it took him six years to write this show and that little detail right um pulled me through I'd say at least two years since I've known that and pulled me through a lot of hard days where I felt like I was getting nowhere Mm -hmm. and I'd remember well my artist hero Lin-Manuel Miranda it took him six years and I'm not there yet so it it helps me keep going so finding out the real backstory behind some of your heroes in any field can it can just be really encouraging yeah because the overnight thing even though we know it's not true it's still the thing that just feels like it's out there it is isn't it I don't know why it's really frustrating and yeah I'm trying to do as much as I can to remind myself of that as well (laughs) there's no such thing as the overnight success yes 
Issa, I feel like I could talk to you forever, but I feel like this video has probably been long enough and we should let people go. Yeah. But where can people go to find more of like your writing and your thoughts and yeah. keep up with you? Creativeteacup.com. So if you're an artist of any kind, that's where I interview other artists. So I share with you a lot of those details that really help when it comes to needing inspiration to keep going. Yes. Definitely worth checking out. Thank you so much, Issa, for being on my channel. Thank you, Charlie. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, got something of value from this conversation. If you feel like sharing, I'd love to hear about your dreams down below in the comments. Both of us, I'm Me sure, too. would love I'm to gonna read, go read them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Yay. Yay. It got really dark by the end of